Hi, in this video, I'm going to talk about election forecasting. It's also known as uh, cephalogy. It's a separate academic branch. Not many people actually know about it, but it's uh, somewhat related to political science. But people in cephalogy, they use data and opinion uh, to forecast political outcomes, political results. Uh, and one of the main political uh, result is the election outcome, right? There are other, others, of course, but uh, one is, uh, which is the most important one, is the election forecasting. Um, currently, there is a presidential election going on in the US. And as you probably know, all media agencies are forecasting the outcome. Uh, be it the US media agencies or European media agencies or for that matter any media agency now is using some sort of uh, techniques to forecast the outcome. Right, so but how is it done and is it trustworthy? What are the problems with such an analysis? Does this analysis uh, influence uh, the, the decision of the voter? Does it have impact on the on the on the outcome of the election. So these are some of the things we will take a look at in this particular video. So stay tuned. All right, so with regards to US election, as you probably know, people are saying that, okay, Biden has uh, higher chances of winning this election because of the models are predicting, right? Some of the uh, very well-known media agencies such as Bloomberg um, or The Economist, The Washington Times, even The New York Times have predicted uh, Biden to be uh, the winner. Can we trust that? And if you know this uh, beforehand, uh, the, if the people of, in the US know this beforehand, will it uh, change their mind? Will they change their mind? Uh, will it have influence on the decision-making process? So that's something we will discuss. Before that, we'll try to understand how is it done, what are the weaknesses are, whether we should trust the results or not. All right, so election forecasting in the modern days are done uh, based on statistical analysis. 30, 40 years back, uh, we used to have opinion poll. People used to simply go out and talk to people, get a sense of, okay, who is actually having an age over um, other candidates. And based on that, it, it used to be more opinion oriented, but now it is more statistical. Why? Because data, gathering data has now become cheaper. You can go out and take opinion uh, through offline mode, but uh, online mode is even more cheaper and more convenient. And one name that is very, very famous in the election forecasting is the 536, sorry, 538. It was started by Ned Silver, a very well-known uh, data journalist and a statistician for this analysis uh, is quite questionable. And I'm going to talk to you why it is questionable. Okay, so we use regression techniques, actually. Uh, people use regression techniques. Mostly these are multinomial logistic regression techniques where you have some uh, categories and the data, the variables are used to predict this category. And the categories are basically the candidates, whether it's Trump, it's Biden, and other candidates, right? You have three to four candidates. You try to find out the log or of, uh, you know, being able to predict the, the outcome, right? And there you have like four categories, uh, multinomial logistic regressions, right? There are several assumptions in such type of techniques and people don't actually know, normal people don't know about them, but academicians and economists, statisticians know about them. But what happens actually, people actually work in the media agency for such kind of work, they do not really pay attention to such attention uh, to the assumption. What they are really interested in is that whether whether this analysis is actually supporting their own narrative. If they really want Trump to win, uh, or uh, or for that matter any other candidate to win, they will uh, do an analysis in, in such a way that it supports their own narrative. Uh, and that's what is happening in many countries. Uh, it is happening also in the US, but oftentimes it's not very scientific. Uh, the reason being because most uh, highly qualified people are not working actually in the media agency in such type of work. If you actually go and do a bit of a research about the people who are working in, uh, in such kind of work, many of them 
do not have any formal education in statistics or econometrics or uh, computer science uh, or mathematics where you know you have lots of theoretical background of actually how you should do what they're doing is that they're using some sort of a built-in tool getting some data fitting in the data and then just writing a story about that it's a dangerous uh, way of uh, doing scientific analysis that's not the way you do scientific analysis so that's misuse of scientific analysis basically so what the variables they use they use employment job creation interest rate inflation all the macro variables they also use a demographic variable such as age gender and so on and so forth um i will anyway any anyone can anyone can use these uh, variables to predict the outcome what is not often talked about is that while the inputs to the models and whether it's an employ employment interest rate or inflation rate is gender are very clear and they are readily available uh, and the quality of the data used is also quite okay especially in the developed countries where you have proper data for uh, these variables what is often not talked about here is that uh, i mean uh, whether you have done proper treatment to the data for example if for outliers okay, whether you have done treatment for for the outlier uh, i'll tell you what the issue here is uh, in the recent uh, in the in the data that they have used uh, for for the us election most of these agencies have taken the recent months of data and have given a lot of weightage to that but it's an exceptional scenario right you can't take employment job creation interest rate inflation to be playing a big role in the recent times because we know that we are going through an unprecedented uh, circumstances and these are completely unexpected and no government in the world can actually handle a crisis of this kind hence you these these uh, such data should be considered as outliers but i think no one is considering them and then what is happening is that they are using that as sort of the performance of the government or the the president in power and then you know sort of predicting that okay the sentiment of the overall population is very bad because of such and such indicators but then they haven't done actually proper treatment to the outliers or to the extreme events what happens afterwards is that when they come out with such results and write report about it talk about it in new channels through social media the, through the social media hand, handles and you know and and it the message is out in the open for the public to sort of judge the government even if the can uh, the people um did not have such feelings for the government they tend to have such feelings after reading such reports uh, after reading such news articles hence it uh, such uh, analysis has got a lot of influence uh, on the decision making of the voters and hence uh, non scientific analysis to me i think should be should be uh, properly uh, regulated i think media agencies should be able to should should be uh, you know able to provide us the information about what models they have used for the forecasting what are the techniques they use these things are not very transparent all right sampling technique is one another issue where they go terribly wrong uh, they uh, talk to only a small section of the society like in most times it's less than even 1% and then they make uh, the draw conclusion out of that it's not necessarily representative of the entire population and it's uh, often times this is not representative especially in big countries such as us or india or uh, yeah in some big countries it's very difficult to go out and get uh, a good representative sample of data for this analysis because it's practically impossible even on online method you can't reach out to many people because the many people don't have access to online mediums so the data is almost always uh, not representative um in recent time people are using uh, more advanced techniques using machine learning you know mining the social media data and twitter sentiment analysis one such um uh, one such uh, analysis but remember one thing that not all people are on twitter like for example i am myself uh, i'm not on twitter and i'm sure many of my friends are not on twitter even though they are educated 
you know have access to internet and very active on social other social media platforms such as facebook instagram but twitter is not for everybody so you can't draw a conclusion based on twitter analysis i think that's uh, just a very very tiny section of the society and what uh, people are doing is that they are simply mining data from twitter and and then doing some analysis and then declaring the winner of the uh, election i think that's a very wrong way and it influences the yeah it, it has very negative impact on the on a fair election actually so that's something to be discussed i think people especially the the reputed uh, media agencies should be asked to share their models their tools and techniques so that you know it is transparent is known to people that okay these are the scientific analysis and people of reputation should be able uh, you know will then give their opinion whether this is trustworthy or not only then normal people should believe uh, on such things otherwise it's best not to pay attention to such things then role of ai um, well artificial intelligence has been there for a very long time it's only in the recent times in the last 10 years or so ai has uh, has been you know receiving a lot of attention from all quarters and um, election forecasting is no exception it is also uh, people are now using very advanced artificial intelligence techniques to uh, predict uh, winner of an election there's a lot of potential i do believe that uh, ai has uh, much larger uh sort of uh, you know advantage compared to traditional statistical analysis uh, why because ai is is not um that sensitive to such uh, tiny mistakes made by the analyst uh, it's sense not that sensitive to outliers well sub it it is sometimes but no doubt uh, it can handle it better than the traditional models and then ai is so complex that our political scientists working for uh, media agencies simply won't understand what they will do is that say probably will simply use uh, the built in tools by amazon or google or other tech companies so they have minimum influence there so they can't change things by themselves they can't change the or manipulate the algorithm by themselves probably to some extent they can manipulate the data but not the algorithm or not the methodology so that way it is somewhat more trustworthy but again i am not expert in this matter to give in my opinion but i strongly believe ai can play a bit uh, better role but it's too early actually right it's too early to say that ai will play a big role but um, it could also have very uh, unethical impact because ai you know people are now using all kinds of data right even Uh, satellite data image data facial recognition data i mean the, the you name it right the color uh, of your t-shirts and every single data points they have at their disposal they are using that for uh, building ai related models and then there's a question of ethics can you collect data because you collect data for all other regions and then you use that for uh, election forecasting uh, for example if bbc or the economist or cnn new york times they take our data right they get data uh, based on our browsing behavior what we are browsing and then they are showing us ad and all all of that what about them using such data for election forecasting it's very unethical because we we never gave consent to use our personal data for election forecasting but i don't know if they are using that but uh, i'm not surprised if they are using such personal data anyway how accurate are these models so even with all the uh, brouhaha with the election forecasting and the so called experts doing uh, you know such analysis it has gone wrong many many times um, i remember uh, well the most famous one of course is the last us election in 2016 where predictions were were in favor of hillary clinton but what turned out uh, at the end was uh, that donald trump actually won that election um that was quite unexpected so models didn't quite do a good job it was also seen in india in other countries also so don't always trust these models uh, and most importantly don't change your opinion based on the outcomes of uh, election forecasting models i mean uh, what happens normally is that if for example everyone is saying biden will win and uh, there is no way uh, trump will win 
So what will happen, especially in federal system in the US, that people might change their opinion. What, if they initially wanted to vote for Trump, they would rather not vote for him because they say, okay, why would I vote for somebody who is sure to lose this election? Right, so, and that also happens in India where we have uh, federal system. So people do that. So election forecasting models and especially the news articles based on these models uh, often actually influence the decision make, uh, made by the voters. Anyway, a lot of problems. We have already talked about most of the problems. First of all, it's poor sampling. They don't do proper sampling. Data quality so it goes without saying it's there for all kinds of statistical analysis. But certainly such analysis, which is done basically in two to three months time uh, by people who are not necessarily some professors in some top rank universities. These are people who don't even have PhD. Many of them are not even statisticians or econometricians. Uh, so they don't know and they don't really understand how to deal with data quality issues, what actually is good data quality. I highly doubt. There may be good writers, good journalists, but not uh, not experts in, uh, not the expert in scientific analysis. Paid opinion, uh, it is quite prevalent everywhere in the world uh, because in election forecasting, you use opinion data and oftentimes what happens is that uh, elect, uh, the political party actually pay people to sort of give opinion in favor of them, but that not necessarily uh, the true opinion of the uh, population. Anyway, so sampling has serious issue actually you know the prop without a proper sample sam uh, proper representative sampling you, you can't really predict uh, the outcome unskilled professional in the media i've talked about it a lot i won't spend much time there politically motivated and it goes without saying by the way in the uh, modern times we see that most media agencies um, are politically motivated right they have a lot of uh, a uh, lot of things at stake. They have they favor certain candidates, and then their analysis will simply be just to um, support their own uh, narrative about the election outcome. So it's not unbiased. All right, impact. I've also talked about it. Creates confusion among voters. This has been seen not just now, but also during 70s and 80s when you know. Um, election forecasting is were just about it were done not that intensely like what it is how it is done now but back then also it was it was there was evidence that it used to create confusion often biased and influenced decision of the uh, voters all right so last uh, point here is that because of such things i think uh, universities have now come up with degrees in political science uh, specializing in data science. I think that's a wonderful step because political scientists as such are not trained to do such analysis. Journalists with, you know, with uh, liberal arts background are not equipped enough to do such analysis. Uh, hence, it's very important that people study both data science as well as political science because de general data scientists also are probably not the most suited people to do such analysis because they lack the domain knowledge. So you need people who get the best of both worlds, political science and data science, and then only they can do a proper analysis on such a very complex problem. And, and it's good, it, there are not many programs. I think there are a few in the US. I think some European universities also now planning to come up with such programs, but it will be good if more and more universities start uh, providing such, such courses, if not full-time courses, but at least part-time, uh, online programs where you know people wanting to get into such fields can also uh, use that. And goes without saying, uh, this is a field which is very promising. Uh, there are many top consulting firms working in election, uh, not just election, but also all kinds of uh, political decision making. And it's important that people specialize in this area.